always from verse 4. Philippians 4 4. Philippians 4 4. Here it is. Rejoice for glory he had an alti. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. And again I say rejoice. I don't know what you're going through, but this is what the Lord is telling me that rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And he says again, he repeated it, this Paul talking to the Philippians. And he's telling them that listen, rejoice in God. No matter what you are going through today, I say rejoice. Make yourself happy. Make yourself your day Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. As we are about to celebrate Yalena's birthday today too, we are also saying that Yalena rejoice in the Lord. You know, many people are trying to rejoice in what they have, which will pass away. But learn to rejoice in God. Rejoice in God. Make yourself happy in God. Encourage. In, in, in David's time, David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. So you have to encourage yourself. In this part of the world, nobody's going to encourage you. You have to learn to encourage yourself. You have to learn to push yourself, to make yourself happy. If not, it's only sorrow you will see around you. But learn to rejoice. Learn to rejoice. Learn to rejoice in the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the next verse that says here. Let me jump. Let me, let me jump to six. He said, be careful for nothing. For be careful for nothing. For in the world. For nothing. Don't worry yourself about anything. Don't, don't, don't worry yourself. And Jesus will tell you that how many of us have worried and we have grown taller by worrying. And then Jesus said, if we men cannot do that thing that is so little, why do we worry? Why do we worry? And then now Paul is trying to rephrase it in his own way. He said, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer. Everything by prayer. Everything by prayer. 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 Eh? Don't worry. Because many people can tell you that they sat up the whole night. They worried. Their problems never change. Are you know what their problem never change. But then when they pray, when they pray, their problem change. It is prayer that will change the problem. It's not worrying and complaining that will change the problem. Amen? So it's prayer. Amen? So he's saying that be careful for nothing, nothing, nothing. What, what is it? Nothing. Those things we are dealing with, those things that is making you sad today, tomorrow that thing will not be there. There's a word that says that for this problem to pass away, this problem it shall also pass. Hmm? So Jesus was also telling his disciples back then that don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then Paul is also saying the same thing. And if Paul is trying to say this thing, you know where he's coming from. Because he's a man who has every right to worry. Because the gospel that he has put on his back, the gospel is killing him. He's being put in prison from one prison to another prison for the gospel's sake. And he wrote a letter to these people saying, that, listen, don't worry. I don't know what is worrying you. I don't know what is making you sad. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, prayer with supplication, that you are submitted to God and you are thanking God in your heart. Not complaining. Thanking, praying, and saying, God, I thank you. And you are still being faithful. Being faithful to God. Being faithful to God. With supplication, all supplication, submission, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 
Learn to make your request be made known. Learn to make your request be made known. Let your requests be made known to God. Amen? Amen. So this is, this is just saying to us that learn to make your request be known through prayer. And remember the things God has done and thank Him. Thank a heart of for those suffering and you. Ring the door, you know. So this, this is what I'm saying. That this is what God wants. God wants you to continue to worry Him with your request and make sure that your request is made known. Thank Him. Number one, He said, pray, pray, supplication. Number two, thanksgiving. Through that, you make your request known. Let your request be made known unto God. Amen. Sometimes we spend too much time talking about our problems and we spend less time praying about our problems. And he said, when you do these things, the next verse, 7, when you do all these things and the peace of the Lord which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Is it when you keep praying, when you keep praying, then the peace which only comes from Jesus Christ will keep your mind. You know, there, there, there's something that I've come to cherish. I've come to cherish having faith in the Lord still in adversity. When there's problem, but I can still have faith in the Lord. I, then I call myself a successful person. Now the people who are successful, it's easy for them to believe God. If everything is going well for them, it's easy. But the strongest man and the most blessed person is a person who is facing adversity, problems, and he still have faith, peace. You now there's peace that comes in Jesus' name. Not the peace that somebody will promise you, a man will promise you, but peace that comes knowing God that God is there for me. Jesus, come and yell for me. That is the peace I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. And he said, when you do these things, when you do this thing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, that means you cannot comprehend. People, that means you will have peace and people wouldn't know why. Why are you still happy when you have all these problems? It passes all understanding. People cannot understand why you are still okay. When they know all your problems, that you have problem one, problem two, problem three, problem four, problem five, problem six, all these problems, and still you look peaceful. Still you look happy. Still there is hope. You have hope in you that my problem is going to change. It's in the peace which passes all understanding. That means no doctor could explain it. No lawyer can explain it. No counselor can explain it. Nobody can explain it. But the peace that you will be having only comes from Jesus Christ. When I have that peace, then I call myself blessed. When I don't have that peace and I'm worried and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What, what should I do? Maybe what should I do? Then I know I don't have peace. When somebody has peace, they are cool. When you have peace, you don't rush. When you have peace within you, you are calm. Nothing scares you. And where do we get this peace from? You get this peace by knowing how big your God is. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm supposed to just boost up your prayer life with this verse. Now learn to have peace. Le learn to enjoy peace. Peace in Christ. Have that peace in you. But when you don't have that peace, you'll be worried. And worrying is a sign of unbelief. Uro, they take and do a Nedu, Uro, Uro, they instill take at do a When you are worried, it's a big sign that you don't believe God anymore. Amen. There's a Bible verse that says in the book of James, it says, Oh, you. You, you, you believe in God, you think you believe in God, yeah, you, you, you have done well. But even Satan believes in God and his demons and they all tremble. So even demons also believe and they tremble. So if you are a believer and you say you believe in God, 
and you cannot have peace in the law, then you will lose the mind. I'm not even preaching. I'm not supposed to preach this one. Amen? He say, and the peace of God, that peace will only come from God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts, your hearts, mind, hearts and mind. Your mind will have peace. Your hearts will have peace. Amen. May you receive that peace today. Amen. Through, through Jesus. Through Jesus. Not through your work. Not through your job. Not through your friends. Not through your family. Not through all this stuff. There must be peace that comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace that comes through the Lord. Only peace that comes through the Lord can even heal. When you have this peace, you are going to be healed. And then he says, finally, the next verse, finally, brethren, whatsoever thing are true, anything that is truthful, don't believe in lies. He said, don't sit down and think about something that you don't know the truth. Hmm? Only in this nation you can meet a, 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 another guy in town. And the person will tell you something. That is one version of the story. You don't know the other version. But this country is the only place that the version you've heard, you are working with that one. You are not going to say, ah, I, I, my sister, my brother, I met this person. And the person says so and so, so about you. I want to know your version. Before you conclude. So the Bible says, whatever that is true, and how do you know the truth? After you've checked, you've listened to both sides. And then the spirit of truth that is in you will conclude. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God is saying that God is speaking this thing through Paul to give to the church. That church, you are listening to the wrong things. You are listening to the wrong things. You know what the truth is. Do you know that if you know that this thing, you today, you know that this thing is white. But if every, every minute and every second, somebody can be telling that it's black, it's black, there will be a day you will believe it's black. Do you know that? What you keep hearing, and if you are hearing for many, many months, you will believe it. Because society has influence. Pressure has influence. Peer pressure has influence. If 20 people can come and say, ah, why are you still thinking that this thing is white? Haven't you heard everywhere that now this thing, this thing, we don't call it white anymore, we call it black. You will buy it. Amen? So, he's saying that the things that are true, finally, my brother, is, is concluding, he said, finally, I'm saying to you, whatsoever thing that is true, and what, whatsoever things are honest. You know, we are some, sometimes we are so blind that you can stand there, a full-grown man, a full-grown man, somebody can stand there and be telling you a lie. It's not honest. You know it's not honest, but you buy it. I get what I'm saying. You know that what this person is saying is not true, but in a way, you convince yourself to buy it. Amen. These are the things that you need to work yourself out for. Stand for the truth. Continue to know God. Continue to believe God. And this church was going through the same thing. They were going through the same thing. There's somebody who just come and just tell them something and then they will, they will give up. So Paul is saying, you know the truth. Think of the honesty. Things that are honest. Amen. Amen. And what's the thing that I is just? Justice. Just. Just means that thing that is right. What I do for Ima, I must do for uh, Bobby. What I do for Bobby, I must do for Destiny. Or, or they, you know, things that is just. 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 The law is a law. It works for everybody. No favoritism. What is just? What is correct? Hmm? Anything that is just. Anything that is honest, anything that is true. And then he say that, and then whatsoever is pure. You know, there are things that when you are thinking about, you become dirty. 
There are things that when you are thinking about, you become defiled. I don't know whether you know this thing what I'm talking about. There are certain things that when you, you are lying to your mind, and you are sitting down, you are thinking about it, then all of a sudden, spiritually, you feel dirty. You be smooth. Now you the tank or rains. They feel smooth they are tank. Now they come with it, Yana. So you be smooth. So he's saying that so whatever thing that is pure, 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 clean. Think on these things. And what's about things that are lovely? Begin to do things that are to show love. Lovely things. Love. Things that are lovely. Everything where you are concluding, add love to it. Is this love? If I do this thing, will it show love? Will it encourage love? What I'm doing now, is this of love? Or what I'm doing now, is it of wickedness? Is it of uh, uh, selfishness? Or is it of love? So whatever you do, do it out of love. There is no need for you to, to, to do anything without love because then you don't get reward. But everything you do out of love, you'll be rewarded. Amen? This is the reason why many relationships are facing problems because people are doing things not out of love. A lot of things are happening just because, let me just do this thing to shut it up. Let me just do these things so that you'll be quiet. You're not doing it out of love. If you want to give, give out of love. Yeah, give out of love. Whatever you want to do, do it out of love. Because you have been loved by God. You know, but we easily forget. The moment God opens some small door for us, then our hearts change. Then it becomes self. Self. And selfishness testing, and then you cannot share love again. So do everything you do, everything that you do, do it out of love. Whatsoever things are good report. Good report means that if somebody should hear it, would they be encouraged in God? You know how demonic the, the, the enemy, the devil is so bad that if he wants to do something, he will intentionally do it, that the thing will become a bad report. That if another person hear it, they can also do it. So do things that is of good report. That if somebody, oh, did that guy do that? Oh, praise be to God. God bless him. That is a good report. That report, that testimony has lifted somebody's spirit up. Amen? Amen. But then when you are doing things that are bad reports, other people will follow. And then it doesn't just follow other people. But the spirit that, come, that made you do that, that spirit will follow you. A lot of people have spirits following them. The all night we treated all these things, which was all night was wonderful. Uh, those of you that miss it, you miss it big time again. But the Lord be your help. That these things we are talking about that could do things that have good reports. Good reports. Positive things. When somebody hears, oh, did they do that? Oh, did that guy do that? Oh, praise God. Jesus put it in his way. He said, let your righteousness so shine before all men. So that all men, when they see what you are doing because of God, will give praise to God. That is important. Other people must see your relationship and your love for God. So they can say praise be to God. That still, there are people who believe in God. Amen? It looks like I'm preaching. It looks like I'm preaching. So good things, good things, good reports. Let's always remember that somebody is watching us. Always remember that somebody is watching. You are a disciple to somebody, you don't know. And one day you will go and start somewhere and God will tell you, you are praying. And God will say, you know, there was a guy who was watching you when you were doing this and that and that. And because of the way you were behaving over there, the guy decided not to follow God. One day, God, if you are not careful, God can show you that. You see, all these people at this corner here suffering is because of what you did. They saw it and they couldn't follow God. Paul puts it in this way. He says, seeing that we are so surrounded with so many eyewitnesses, people who are watching us, we are the Bible they are reading. The Bible, the world cannot read. We are it. They look at us. So this, all these people, they say they are Christians. They don't say they don't throw Jesus. They are reading us. They are not reading the Bible. 
They want to see whether we are representing Christ or whether we are evil or whether we are wicked or whether we are listening to people. As for people and people's mouth, it will always be there. But you must come to a point whereby you will take the voice of God and you will cherish the voice of God. Say so whatever thing that is good. If there be any virtue, virtue means if there be power, substance in it, something that will, will, will produce the presence of the power of God, if there be virtue, then, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So that means right now God is dealing with your thinking. Another man said that, for it is with the mind we also serve the Lord. We also serve God not only in our heart, we serve God also in our mind. There are a lot of decisions that you are taking in your mind. But the decision that will stay in your mind and you will transfer it to your heart is based on what you believe. Hmm? A lot of thinking comes to your mind. A lot of thoughts comes to your mind. And then you say, no, 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 no. This one, I know the thought is in my mind. But I can't do this because I love God. So what you are thinking also is playing a big role. No, I can't say this. Because I'm supposed to be a child of God. I can't do this because I love God. I can't do that because I love Jesus. So there's a lot of thinking going on here. Decision making. Why shouldn't I go? Why shouldn't I go and do this? Why shouldn't I help? Why shouldn't I stand and do what I'm supposed to do? I love God. So they're thinking. There's, and the, another person also said that the mind is a battlefield. The mind is a battlefield. There's war going on here. What wins is what goes to the heart. A lot of ideas is coming to your mind. But the one you choose is the one you send to your heart. That let that one rule your day. Amen? The last verse, and then I'll, I'll take my, my sermon. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be, but praise be to God. He said, those things which ye have both learned and have received and heard and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. So he's telling you that do these things, the things that you've seen me do. That means Paul is talking as a disciple. He's talking as a disciple. Paul is talking as a disciple that what you have seen me do, do those things. So that means somebody say, what I see Natasha do, I'm going to do it. What I see Yasmin do, I'll do it. Whatever I see people who represent God, I do it. That's why for me it was very important that we must have a foundation. This church must have a foundation. We must have laws and and, and things that we abide by because it is easy for somebody to come here and then the first week they will look at what everybody here is doing what the people here are doing is what they will do no matter what you put on the wall that this is our rules and regulation it will not happen it will not bother but what they see people do the bible is there the torah was there but paul is saying that what the things you see me do do so people are following you. Amen? People are following you. Don't you know that the well gets shot when they come across a man of God who is a drunkard, a man of God who is smoking, a man of God who is a womanizer, a man of God. Then the, the world is like, ah, I'm amazed that this man of God is doing that because they expect that you shouldn't do that. They know the, the Bible is there. They don't read it, but they read us. And before I realize, they are saying, that, oh, because that man of God is doing it, me too, I'm going to do it. And then now you have created disciples. Amen? You've created, you've created disciples. So I pray that that will not be our issue. So whatever thing that is going on in your heart now, that is worrying you, I pray today that you will let it go in Jesus' name. That came to my heart. Daniel chapter 3 verse let's start from verse 8 now this was the days where 
the children of Israel has rebelled against God. After God has brought them out of Egypt, God has blessed them, God has given them everything, and they turned their back against God. And God kept on warning them with different, different prophets. So God has the prophet um, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all these prophets were warning the children of Israel that change because God is getting angry. Change, God is getting angry. Change, God is getting angry. And they wouldn't listen. And the kings were raising their own prophets. Prophets that would lie to them. Prophets that would tell them the things they want to hear. You know, today that's what we want. We don't want a prophet who's going to see sin in us and point it. We are looking for a prophet that will tell us that everything is well. Because I see your area. I see that you live at this junction, 4449. And then we scream. And then we are happy. We need prophets that can see our hearts. We are looking for prophets that can tell us that, listen, God wants you to change in this area. God wants you to have a better relationship. Amen. So, the children of Israel wouldn't pay attention, so now they have been captured. God raised a king who is called Nebuchadnezzar. And this king too, God was going to use a king to become his servant. But this king didn't know that God is going to use him to become his servant. So God has used him to capture the children of Israel. He has brought them to Babylon. And in Babylon, this incident took place. Amen? We are going to enjoy the story, so get your spirit alert. So in Babylon, there was a young guy called Daniel, a blessed prophet, lawyer. I mean, Daniel is a very, very faithful servant of God. Somebody who is a man of integrity, a man of scale and wisdom. And then he has friends. And these three guys are called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were all living in that city where they have been captured as slaves. But the only thing that will separate you from being a half slave is your talent. If you had a good talent, the king will say, okay, you, you, you will not be amongst your slave people. You are promoted to come and work together with the people that are working for the king. Is your talent. That's why the Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. A man's gift will open doors for him. The gift that you have within you, that is what is going to help you not to be ordinary. So you need to acquire gifts in your life. Even though that the whole nation has been captured. But these guys, they have gifts. And that's why they were brought in to the palace. Amen. Now, the king Nebuchadnezzar one day created an image, a statue, a golden statue, and he says that this thing that I've built, let's say he put it in the middle of the city, and he said, anytime, anywhere, you hear a sound, whether it be trumpet, harp, whatever sound that is blown, Stop whatever you are doing. Bow down. Wherever you are. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he brought that law. That everybody should forget about their God. Every God you knew. You would then give them your the heart. And any time you hear the sound. Whether it be harp, trumpet. Whatever it is. Stop whatever you are doing and bow to this thing that I've created with my hand. Okay? So that became a law. Amen? But the children of Israel, out of the pressure upon their life, most of them were bowing to this thing. Because the king said, and anyone who doesn't bow, that same hour, you'll be thrown into the furnace of fire. So the king has a huge place with fire and that fire is just there for anybody who will say that I'm not going to bow to this thing then they'll be thrown into the fire Amen, Amen. including the slaves that have come 
They, he wants them to forget about their God. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac. He wants them not to serve him anymore. He is giving them new gods that they should bow to. It's not funny like some of us, we leave our country, we come to this country, and then all of a sudden the devil tells you that you don't have to serve God. Or worse of it, you will have a man of God, a true man of God, who is leading you as, 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 as a man of God, and then he's teaching you the right way to live life, but somebody will tell you that, oh, as for apostle, he doesn't want people to have their gifts. It's, it's a spirit. You need to walk in the spirit of God so you are not going to be deceived. I tell you that if a man of God tell you to go and do something that is not scripture, then you have a case. But anytime you have a man of God that is taking you through the way, this same word of God has delivered nations. Which battle? Where, when, when have you heard that Satan won in a battle? Satan never win in a battle. Even the fight that is going on in your life, he will lose that one too. Amen? Even the battle, the problem you are facing right now, that one too, God will win it. Satan will just shake around, shake around, shake around, but he will lose. Because that is how God has ordained life to be. Satan will never win any battle. You didn't say amen. Because you don't believe. Eh? I said Satan will never win any battle. Amen. Yeah. No battle. Where, where did you see? When, when have you heard that there was a battle and Satan won? <laughs> so Satan has declared, I'm a loser. But I will make you, I will frustrate you not to believe that I'm a loser. I will make you feel like I've won. The Bible has declared all the way to the end of the world. The last day of the world, God has put it in the Bible that Satan lost the battle. But still, we behave like Satan is winning. I get what I'm saying. So how can we behave in that way when we know that God has already declared Satan a loser? Jesus came. He said, "For Satan has fallen. He has lost everything. The Son of Man, uh, the Son of Man is here, and Satan cometh, but he has nothing in him." And Jesus said, "Now Satan will be cast out." Why is he saying now he will be cast out? First of all, he said Satan has lost, but now he will be sad. I see the difference about it. Satan has lost the battle, but now he's going to be sacked. When Jesus said that, that he's going to be sacked out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let Satan be sacked out of your life. Amen. So Jesus said, now the prince of this world will be cast out. So work on your thinking. Rewire your brains. Amen. Amen. Now, wherefore, a time Wherefore, at that time, a certain Chaldeans came now and accused the Jews. So they saw that these guys are not bowing to this God. You know, when you decide that even though that everybody comes around and they compromise, they don't serve God the right way, and you say that, listen, I'm going to serve God because I know that all blessing comes from God. All good things come from above. So you decide in your heart that you're going to serve God. Then all of a sudden, a spirit of complaint will come and will start complaining. They will decide to complain. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So now they went and they complained to the king that, King, we have some guys who don't bow when your trumpet is blown. We have some guys who don't bow to you. They don't bow to your God. Amen. I pray that you will be one of those people who will not bow. Who will not bow to the circumstances that Sweden creates. Nobody here will bow to any problem that the devil has pictured or created. Amen? And it says here, let's now. And the king, oh, they spoke and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, live forever. Ten. And, uh, he said, Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the, 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 the cornet, flute, harp, sopet, uh, psaltery, and 
and so forth, so forth, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship, worship, worship worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the fire. So these guys have now gone to the king and they are telling the king that we have guys in this city who have said that they are not bowing. They are, we have people who don't want to bow. And when you make that decision, that no matter what we are going through, you will not bow, then the enemy will start fighting. The enemy will report you to the king. The king of mom, the devil of mom, the spirit of mom, the spirit that doesn't want you to move on, the spirit that doesn't want you to have God. So there's a lot of compromising going on. A lot of people are compromising. We have churches compromising, pastors compromising, children of God are compromising, everybody is compromising. You talk to people, they are compromising. They say God will understand, God will understand. God don't understand. <laughs> yeah? Do you know the only thing God understands? God understands righteousness. Loyalty. That is what moves God. Just because you want something for yourself, it doesn't make God compromise his way. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Just because you think that it's a need for you. So you think God will say, oh, I'm backing out. Okay, because this guy needs this. So let me just forget about everything I've said. No. Amen? Amen? So remember this thing that nothing should cause you to compromise. Nothing should cause you to compromise. I like what the king said here in verse 17. So now, you know, remember, the king now is having a nice chat. A nice chat with, with, with these guys because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is very important to them, to him. And he's trying to tell them that, oh, guys, you know, maybe, you know, situation in Sweden, situation in Europe, compromise a little bit. Look for these women, marry one. You know, even though you might not love it, you know, marry, get your paper. When you get your paper, then you can just dump the woman, go for your real woman. You know, the king is now having a nice chat with the guys. But what about this job? You know, job is not available today. So when you just stay in the church, when apostle pray and you get a job, then forget about church. Make all the money you can make. And then when you lose the job, come back as a humble person again and start praying again. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, you know, summertime now, that's the only job we have. So take all the jobs, say yes to every job. I say, ah. So King now is talking to them. And look at what the king, the king even threatened them. He says here, 14. Now which are spoke, spake and said unto them, is it true? He's asking Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Do not, uh, do not ye serve my gods. You, don't, you, you guys, you are the only people who don't want to serve my God, nor worship the golden image with which I have set up. Now, if ye be ready, now if you will be ready, if you will change your mind a little bit, if you allow me to give you the second chance, for your sake, I will allow the trumpet to blow again. You know, it happens. You know, so the devil knows that he, he wants you to compromise on your service to God. So what he does is that he will give you another chance. Just for your sake. Say, you, I will give you another chance. See, see, see what is it? Now, if ye be ready, now if you have changed your mind, that at what time ye hear the sound of the candid flute and all this stuff, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, then you are my guys. Then you will succeed and you will prosper. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast that same, the same hour into the midst of the burning furnace the very fairy fence. Yeah? And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? And I know God didn't care about this whole thing. But when that man said, who is that God? It was like, Nebuchadnezzar not the door of God. He said, God, another fight. He said, who is that God you are talking about? You see, he could have won. This story, we could have never heard about this story if he didn't have said that, who is that your God? Who is going to deliver you from my hand? Then God, I see God standing out of his seat. He say, somebody is, is talking. Somebody is saying something negative about me. I mean, do you know how many children of Israel were dying in that time? Anybody who wants to challenge the king, your head is cut off. 
They kill, they kill, they were killed. But if the king opened his mouth and said, Who is that your God? Then now the battle is no more now between the three boys and the Buchanizer. But now the battle is between the Buchanizer and God. So God said, Oh, Jesus, put on your put on your earthly clothes. I get it. God now stood up and said, No, 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 somebody wants to challenge me. I don't care about these three boys. But the way this man said, who is that God who delivered you out of my hand? The man has actually prayed for the words. And he has brought God into the midst. You know, you always win the battle when somebody challenges your God. Let people insult you anyhow they want. But the moment they say that these, are, these people, they are always wasting their time. God, 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 God. is the most powerful prayer that somebody can do for you. If the person is your enemy, he doesn't understand you. He has prayed a very good prayer. Because now it's not you telling God, God, prove to them that you are God. But now, the mouth of the people who say they are wasting their time trying to serve God. Then God comes down. Amen? So he said, who is that God who is going to save me? Now let's jump to 17. And, and then now Shadrach and Meshach, uh, Abednego, no, 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. You see, you know, every assignment you've given us since we were brought as slaves to this, your city, your country, we are very careful and, and diligent in doing everything. But when it comes to this thing, talking about our God, you know, you lo I lose it. I, I get what I'm saying here. You are not there yet. You are not there yet. You see, the guys are saying to the king, that we are not going to be very careful trying to save our life because you're not talking about our God who made us. Our God who made us become slaves into, into your hands. But he's still God. I don't know how you see God when you are going through trials. Sometimes when we are going through trials, then we denounce God. We say, God, you are not my God anymore. But these guys, in spite of being slaves, they say you are talking about our God. I'm not going to be careful to answer you. Some of you, when your boss is talking to you, and they are even making decisions, will you go to church on Sunday? You are very careful in answering. Uh, this job is the only job I have now. The, in the moment you start thinking that this is the only blessings God has for you, that will be the only blessing you will have. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you can push yourself and say, no, God is still bigger than this man who owns this company. Not the company, the man who owns it. Then you are, you are coming up. So the guys are saying, no, we are not careful about this one. As for this one, we put everything aside. When it comes to our God, we will fight you. When it comes to my God, I will fight you. It reminds me when I was arrested and put in, 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 in Davis Hall uh, police station for preaching on the train. The police officer called me to his office and said, ah, you are worrying me every day. Release your message on the street. I want to release you because I've heard you have children. If I release you, will you go back? I said, this is a contract I have between me and God. I must do three hours evangelism every day. So if you release me, I'm going back. If you're going to talk about the rules and regulations of Sweden, fine. That one we can talk about it. But when you want to talk about my God and my relationship with my God, I'm not obeying you. That is what the guys were trying to say. I'm not obeying you. I will still preach. I will still preach this message. Whether I have papers or I don't have papers, I will preach it. Because the God who told me in my bathroom when I didn't have papers that I will give you papers to stay in this country, that is the God I'm saying. Are you getting me? You see, until you go all the way out and you really mean what you are saying. A lot of people are praying, God, give me paper. God sees your intention for paper that is not correct. What should he give you paper for? What do you need it for? So you can brag. You can also go to Africa and go and turn around and tell people that you made it and come back. Is that what why you're looking for? No. God must see the real intention. The intention why you want it. Is it for him? I said, I told you and I've been telling you over and over. God don't bless you for you. God blesses you for himself. He doesn't just bless people because 
they are, they are in need of blessing. No. Any blessing God gives us, He say, where do I benefit? What would I get? What is in it for me? God will give you a wife because He wants you to give Him children that will serve Him. God is not giving you a wife because He wants to have sex. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah, these are the things that we need to know. If your hormones are hot, you put water on yourself and then you cool down. But this is what God does. God gives you money, not so that you can have slaves. But God gives you money so that you can support his ministry. That's why church folks are broke. The world is getting the money. And Christians don't pay tithes, they don't give offerings, they are broke. Because it's an ad mentality. We don't want to give because you see, hey, why should I give to God? And then you look at man, say, I'm giving to that man. No, it's not man you are giving to. So that is the, the, the thing that is happening to people. So these guys, if you are not careful, if it be so, our God whom we serve is, is able to, be, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from, from the burning furnace, uh, burning uh, fury uh, furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast made or thou hast set up. He said that if whether God wants or God don't want, we will not bow. I don't know how far we can go with that. This, this is a whole month's sermon, only that one alone. Most of us, we say, God, if you don't bless me, I'm finished. I'm not serving you again. Yeah. If I don't get this, I'm not serving you again. We say it all the time, isn't it so? But these guys have come to the level, they are saying, listen, King, we know God, number one, is able to deliver us from this fire. Hmm? But if God is so busy with other schedules, and we have to bear, then let it be so. Are you getting the point over here? If God had other things to do, that he wouldn't come to save us, it's okay. We will still not bow to this God that you have set up. That's when we go to immigration, we lie, we go everywhere, we compromise. Now it's like, let me sing and God will understand later. That, that is what is going on. So they don't, they don't really buy our gospel. I was telling you, I was telling you when we were praying on Friday that for us to break through in this country, we have to break through spiritually. We can be doing evangelism. We are known to be doing evangelism. But yesterday, the amount of prayer that must go into the ground for us to take over, we have not started yet. So we can give bread, we can give cards, we can give coffee, we can do all of that. We are just working. But the real work is to break it spiritually also. Where we will pray for the nation. And when we pray and we take over those spirits that are covering this nation, then you will see the success. But somebody is saying that, if God sent one mighty man of God to come and do it, then all of us will be free. No, you are sent here to come and do it. Amen? So you want somebody to come. Somebody to go and do his 100 days fasting and then come and deliver the country for you so that you can get all your... It is selfishness. But when you say pray for the nation, ah, oh, this prayer, man. Ah, oh, Jesus, bless you. Jesus, bless you. Jesus, bless you. Jesus, bless you. You are not, you are not encouraged. But I'm telling you that you need to break this ground. You need to break this ground. Because of time, I will just have to fast forward. Fast forward it. And let's see. So the king decided that no, let's, let's throw this man, this children into the furnace of fire. This fire was so much that even the enemies that were carrying them to throw them in the fire all got bent. And I pray that let all your enemies who wants to push you to fire let them catch fire. Yeah. Because they are, they are enemies that the enemy has set. That's, that's why I was telling you last week that the Bible said that no weapon formed or fashioned against you. And I was telling them that everybody, there is a weapon that the devil has designed for us. The weapon that God will allow Satan to use against Pastor White, he will not allow it to be used against me. My, the weapon Satan has designed for me is different. 
from the weapon that he has designed for white. So he designs the weapon knowing that this is how I can get this man. So Satan designed Evelyn's copper weapon. So I can have a with us. Some of us, the weapon he has against us is emotions, money, hmm? lust. We say responsibility. It gives you all kinds of ideas. And that is the weapon he's using against us. Just to use that to discourage you. Amen. But you know the story. This story, anytime I preach it, I never finish it. I don't know why. And I always have to send you people to go home and preach it to yourself. <laughs> but what is happening here is that so the king ordered that they should throw these guys into the furnace of fire. And they did that. Another thing that hits me very strong, which I always remember. Thank you, Jesus. 23. I like that. I want to teach that one. He says that, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fury fence. You know, it might look like you have, you have been cast down. They say, what the brand some do for Lord. Because these same guys who Jesus, they are going to meet Jesus in the fire. But when they were thrown, they didn't land on their legs. They fell down. Are you getting me? Oh, you don't get it. They fell down. Boom. Three guys fell down. Boom. In the midst of the fire. And in, 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 in the process, they're falling down into the fire. They never thought about the fire. They have to pick themselves up to stand again. So they never thought about, why, why am I not getting bent? So sometimes, the greatest point in your life is when you fall in. And God has done something miraculous around you, but you don't know. That you, you have just fallen, but God has done something around you. They fell down into the fire. And now when they were rising, look at what happened. They fell down. So sometimes you feel like you are down, but God is still with you. Look at this one. 24. Then the butcher that the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they, and they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth, the fourth is like the Son of God. Probably the guys have not seen him. They haven't seen Jesus Christ in the fire. But to them, the people who throw you down, they will think that you are falling down. But they don't know that there's a lifting up for you. Many people throws you down. And they just remember how you were pushed down. But they don't see that in your pushing down and your rising, there's another addition that has come into your life. Something that was not there before has been added. And you're, and you're not getting me. Something that was not there has been added. This, the, the king rose up. He said, no, I'm seeing four men. I cast in three men, but there's four now. If I knew fourth man would come and join them, I shouldn't have cast them in. <coughs> you didn't get that one. If I know that by throwing my, this guy down, God will add somebody to them, I should have left him. If the, 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 the prince of this world knew that by crucifying Jesus Christ, he will be restored with so much power. The devil himself would have gone to be evangelism and tell the people, don't crucify him. Because if you crucify him, he will come and save a lot of people. Sometimes your enemy is working so hard, but they don't know that they are building you up. They are adding more angels to you. Because, you see, the angels you don't need in the fire will come when you get into fire. I get one angel. If the devil takes your case to God and he said, God, this is how I want to 
test this guy, God will say, hold on. Then I need to equip angels that will go with him through the test. So you, you are rather, the devil trying to come and destroy you, he's rather advocating for you to get more help from God. And he's even bringing you to the mind of God. And that tells God that then you have some qualities in you. That's why Satan is still after you. So you might feel forgotten. But just because Satan has a request over your head, then God will say, then let me give you this extra thing. So as I was saying, God told Jesus, put on your clothes and go and join my guys who are representing me in the fight. If that, they, if that nobody will ever know of Jesus Christ in those days. The king said that the person, the fourth guy, he looks like the son of God. The fourth guy, he looks like the son of God. Has he ever seen the son of God before? No, but his, his divine intelligence is telling that this cannot be an ordinary man. This must be the only begotten son of God. And for God to send his only begotten son of God, that means the, the war is real. Because the king said, who is going to deliver you from my hand? So if there's anyone who does deliverance, that's Jesus Christ. So I'm sending Jesus Christ to be with them. And Jesus, wherever you go, you will transfer peace. So even though the fire is hot, to be able to burn those who cast them in, but you that you are in the fire, you don't feel it. I don't know whether you ever understand what I just said. Sometimes somebody will design a wicked thing against you. Somebody will take you to Juju. But on their way going to Juju and going to Black Magic, they don't know that they are helping you. They don't know that they are lifting you up. They don't know that they are bringing you to another level in life. And those people will stand and look at you and they say, what kind of God is this guy having? That I'm doing all this thing and this person is not falling through. I pray that let that be your case. That they've tried in many ways and they've tried anyhow, they want to destroy your life, but you are not being destroyed because his hand is upon you. And the glory of God is with you. And you are not going to be put to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.